I'm joined though by the writer and activist Poppy Noor, Conservative MP and Chair of the All-Party Parliamentary Group for Housing and Planning, James Cartledge, and John Sparks, Chief Executive of the homeless charity Crisis. And Poppy, you've some familiarity with these difficult decisions being made in housing offices. Just tell us about the kind of thing you've seen. Um, yeah, so I went, I went through the system myself when I was 16 years old, when there was a lot more provision then in terms of benefits that people were afforded and in terms of the rhetoric as well um, around homelessness. Um, and then it was incredibly difficult, you know, e even back then it was kind of like the first council that I went to, I was sent away for not looking homeless enough. Um, and you, you've got to kind of, it, you know, you, you watch that scene and it, it's incredibly sad, but ultimately what that's getting at is the point that we no longer see housing as a basic human right, you know. And in, is that acceptable in, in one of the richest when, economies in the world? When you were there, were they judging you and saying, were they just judging what your need was? Or were they thinking about how much fault they thought you were, how, how much they thought you were responsible for your for your plight? Well, I think the thing is, is these things don't happen in a vacuum, right? So local councils have cuts to their budgets, there's cuts to yeah. welfare budgets at the same time. So automatically, when you walk into a council, they're thinking, especially if there isn't enough housing, how can I get you out of here as quickly yeah. as possible? And well, this comes across in the programme, actually. Yeah. yeah, exactly. And, and also, that you know, it's incredibly easy to fall into those... It, it, it's incredibly easy to do that when you've got a rhetoric that says, you know, people who own houses own houses because they've worked really hard and people who are homeless haven't worked hard enough. James, uh, what you're seeing in the programme is... People who, if they're in the housing market, the market sector, are clearly not going to get a home. They're, they're not going to afford one, whether it's private rent or, or to purchase. I just wonder whether the most basically obvious fact, and whether it's accepted now, is that we just don't have enough of, if you like, the non-market sector homes, the social homes, where they're allocated by other factors than how much money you can afford to, to pay for a room. Sure. I mean, I, I think there is, a, there is a lack of housing of all types of options. If I was to summarise what I think whether you call it the housing crisis, the challenge we face today is it is the fact that huge numbers of people face no palatable options on housing. They have no palatable option there, I accept that. And the only long-term answer to that is greater supply. But obviously that is a huge challenge. Uh, we are doing what we right, can. Right, but it, greater supply at sort of existing prices isn't going to help the kind of the small numbers of millions of people who can't afford the current prices for one reason or another. Now, housing benefit will help a lot of those people, mm. not all of them, but it will help a lot of those people. But I just wonder again whether you, you think we went too far in getting rid of the houses that we can allocate because this person needs a place to live and we've got one to give them to live in. Well, I'm bound to say, I mean, we have built, you know, 300,000 affordable homes since 2010. I think looking at, you know, this case, in fact, before I was an MP, uh, ran a business associated with shared ownership and I was a volunteer small business advisor for Broadway, which is a London homeless charity now merged with St Mungo's, we used to sit with homeless clients trying to help them to get onto their feet. We awarded them grants. Right. And the thing that always struck me in those cases, they were the most severe cases, was how complex and different each case was. Often right. it was about drugs, alcohol. So I don't think you can talk structurally about each and every let case me, affected. Let here. me put it to John. John, have we got enough housing that we can just allocate to people who need a place and don't have the money to buy one or, or we, rent one? We clearly haven't. Um, and and this, is, this is the very sharp end of, of the housing yeah. crisis. Homelessness is, is on the rise in England. Whatever measure you put on it, 73,000 households in temporary accommodation uh, tonight, are, are, are on average night, 3,500 people sleeping um, on the streets. So we clearly haven't got it right. We haven't got it right in terms of uh, affordable housing. And, you know, there are two ways to house people on the very, very lowest incomes. One is investing in social housing. One is providing social security that bridges the gap between what right. people can afford and the cost of housing. And both of those things have been under pressure. Right. And then you compound that with Poppy's experience and the experience on, on, on the programme of hardworking housing officers with with a system which drives them to the crisis point rather right. than a system that deals with prevention. So they, they to be clear, have to sometimes say to people, there is nowhere for you, you're going to sleep on the street tonight. It's not against the law for us to, to basically ask you to, to sleep well, on the they, street. They operate within a, 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 yeah. a legal system that says um, some people are priority need, some people aren't, yeah. some people are owed a housing duty, some people aren't. You, you have, it's a finite resource. You, you always have to have an allocation system of some kind. And that 
Officer, you saw that it is a difficult job. Under any government, in any circumstance, he will have to make rational decisions right. and prioritise. That is a fact. Yeah. And Poppy, even in the 1960s, that's the point of Cathy come home. We were building council houses, uh, many, many of them, and we were still finding, we, you know, you had to make difficult choices, and Cathy was, was the subject of that. Yeah, I mean, I suppose my, my issue with it is that... Um, it, it's completely reasonable to suggest that we should have readily available social housing for people in one of the richest countries in the world. And I think this this discussion about I'm, I, do, I just I, do, I is okay. So if, you, if I can put the question, if yeah. I can put the question back to the Tory minister, is housing a basic human right? I said I'm not a minister. I'm chairman of an Sorry. all party group, but you know, um, every family, every person out there has an aspiration to live in a home they can afford, whether they own it or they rent it. What, the one thing I would say that I think is very important is, and I think the tone has changed in the government, I think there is more of a, an acknowledgement that we've done some really important things in terms of encouraging home ownership, but we have to have a, home ownership, a, a housing policy for everybody, including those who rent, those who are living in rented accommodation. In other words, those who will probably not be able to afford to buy and so on. Can I ask you... You, John, would it be reasonable to say to people, some of these we see in the film, we can get you a home. We, we agree with Poppy's right to having a place to live, but it is not going to be in Barking and Dagenham because houses are short in Barking and Dagenham and they're very expensive. So we're going to put you somewhere else. And if you don't have a job and you don't have, uh, you're not a student here, you know, then you can, you, you can live somewhere else. Is that well, reasonable? I, I think there are two points. I mean, someone who is vulnerable, who is, is homeless, the very best solution for them is to, is to be in their community with positive support systems, the people they know, the schools where their kids can go to school, um, not some place, they're not shunted somewhere else in, in, in the country. That said, you look at the housing market in London, particularly at the moment, mm. and you can see why there is a, a tendency to do that. I think the, the, the other thing to say is, is, although a huge part of this is about housing and the provision of housing, it doesn't have to be the way that was described in terms of allocations. The system at the moment drives the housing officer to, to only deal with the person in absolute crisis it doesn't put a duty on them to actually try to prevent the homelessness in the first place. Legislation in Wales recently has shown that uh, you can reduce the number of people who are owed a housing duty by getting the prevention, prevention activity prevention right. Better than and, and Bob Blackman's private members bill, which is going for okay. second reading on the 20th of October, is exactly about point. that. Look, I just want to finish with one other thing that comes out of the documentary. There isn't enough emergency shelter. There are people who are sleeping on the streets because we can't find them a mattress, for God's sake, in a hall. Now, what is going on there? We could, within a year, surely have halls with proper mattresses, like better than the church hall you see in the film, um, a decent bed for people who need it, who are literally on the streets. Is that, is that beyond the wit of our society to do that? Well, I mean, you know, homelessness has been around for an awful long time. No one has ever come up with a magic solution. What you can do, the government is, is providing support as far as possible for £40 million this week, and, of course, working with the charitable sector, with with voluntary groups and, of course, the local authorities themselves to try and come up with innovative ways to deal with that. I don't think there is a magic answer. Um, but as I said earlier, don't forget, a lot of those individual cases come from complex circumstances. Don't pretend there is some easy general answer to this. Thanks all. Very much. Sorry, we have to leave that. Thanks very much.